Hi everyone, welcome to this video. We're going to talk about um, wall treatments for the Smagorinsky model or the most basic LES model, large eddy simulation. So how can you know, Smagorinsky model be done for the wall? Alright, so we know that um, in general uh, with any kind of uh, turbulence modeling, uh, the Raynaud stress, which is, okay, the Raynaud stress, Raynaud's stress stress equals to okay this is the term bar of u prime v prime bar okay okay let me bracket this u prime v prime bar so it can be u prime u prime u prime v prime u prime w prime all of this okay so Reynolds stress is modeled as a viscosity increase in uh, apparent viscosity for the Smagorinsky model as well as the k epsilon model except for the Smagorinsky model we we are talking about um, increase in a subgrid scale viscosity which is uh, we, we can kind of think of it as a turbulent viscosity as well but uh, in general, Reynolds average Nevis Stokes they use a uh, time averaging, whereas uh, Margorinsky model, uh, most LES models they like to use a space averaging or spatial filtering. We talked about filtering before in the last uh, few videos back. Before I was talking about wall models, so hopefully you can remember that. If not, you can go back and take a look. All right. So uh, remember every. The Reynolds stress uh, is modeled as an increase in viscosity. So the the presence of turbulence viscosity that will tell you the degree of turbulence in that area. Okay? So we expect normally that uh, so just ignore the ignore everything over here. Just pay attention here. We expect normally that turbulent viscosity near the wall it should be approximately zero right because you don't have so much uh, turbulence near the wall okay so just to recall the Smagorinsky model for turbulence viscosity is as such it is defined by some characteristic length scale which is uh, this L over here see Sm uh, the Smagorinsky constant times the the grid scale that you are doing okay yeah so uh, this is our um, yeah length scale so uh, so normally we expect this uh, turbulent viscosity to be very uh, zero near the wall okay so I'll just get rid of this okay so what is this s uh, this s bar is the filtered rate of strain or the kind of the average of it so uh, this is uh, SRIJ okay so you have this this uh, kind of dynamic going on there where you have the the velocity gradients okay this is Einstein notation I won't go over it again but it is talking about the velocity gradients and uh, of the uh, resolved velocity profile okay Alright, so we expect turbulent viscosity to be uh, zero near the wall. And how do we do this? So we need the um, scales or need the grid size to be very small near the wall. Right? We need the grid size to be very small near the wall. And this is uh, LES uh, with resolving of the near wall region we resolve the near wall region of course uh, if we try and resolve this near wall region we expect that the um, computational cost is very high because we need a very 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 small mesh size okay the mesh size is supposed to be able to uh, uh, resolve most of the uh, motions, uh, the turbulence within that uh, within that region, and you can imagine near the wall, near the wall, where you have a viscous sublayer, 
viscous sublayer. All right. You can imagine that the there won't be a lot of turbulence here, or at least the biggest eddies, the biggest eddies are you know pretty small because the closer you go to the wall, the smaller those eddies tend to become. Because uh, if you remember Prentel's mixing length model, the mixing length for for that the fluid near the wall, it kind of decreases with distance. Um, um, yeah, it decreases as you go nearer to the wall. All right, so that's the mixing length model. So the largest sized eddies, um, they are smaller as you go near the wall. Not just because you hit the hard boundary of the wall, but also because you have this viscous sublayer going on. So in the boundary layer, which is not just a viscous sublayer, the boundary layer, yeah, in the boundary layer, you will have smaller eddies. You will still have eddies, but smaller eddies. In the viscous sublayer, you will you will hardly see too a lot of eddies because it, yeah, it's a very very low kind of Reynolds number, and the viscous forces dominate. Okay, so there's hardly any turbulent viscosity there. That still applies even if we talk about the Smagorinsky model. So we should not see much of this inside the uh, boundary layer. So what I'm saying there is the the eddies over here are small. Eddies are small near the boundary layer. So let me use green. Eddies are small in the boundary layer. Therefore, grids need to be smaller. Okay? So therefore grids need to be smaller. All right? So let's uh, let me get the snipping tool out. Okay. So this is a general idea for the classical approach to large eddy simulation, is to just have a, a grid size so small that you don't need to model what goes on at the wall. Uh, the only thing with it, the only problem with this is that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, only problem is this, the number of grid nodes increases with RE, Reynolds number to 1.76, okay, so this is from, I think, Stephen B. Pope's, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, turbulent flow textbook, and he quotes uh, Chapman from 1979. Okay, Chapman, 1979. Okay, but this is from Stephen B. Pope's uh, what do you call it? Uh, turbulent flows uh, textbook. Okay, so the near wall resolution may not be feasible for high Reynolds number flow. Okay, so if you're just going to make the grid size very very small in the in the boundary layer, that's perfectly fine in theory. If you have enough computational power, sure you can do that. So, um, how can we lower the computational cost? So how can we lower computational cost? We have again have to use near wall modeling. So, very similar to k epsilon, at least in this aspect. Uh, we just we like I uh, said, uh, k epsilon, k epsilon. They they will have let's say a flow here. Then they will separate into the bulk region, okay, bulk region, and the near wall region. I'll just call it N W for short. So the bulk region will use the k epsilon model. But in the near wall region, we will have a, a wall function as part of the boundary conditions. This is what's often often used inside a CFD software. Okay. So wall function boundary conditions. So. We could use a similar approach when you talk about LES modeling. So we can use the Smagorinsky 
coefficient, the Smagorinsky modeling inside the over here. So it's like unadulterated, classic Smagorinsky or whatever LES you're using. In the near wall region, we'll have to do some kind of modification. So what kind of modification can we do? So we can do near wall modeling. Okay, so we can adjust, we can adjust turbulence viscosity near the wall. Adjust turbulent viscosity near the wall. Okay, so we can adjust turbulent viscosity near the wall. Alright, so what is this uh, again, new T? This is some characteristic length scale. Squared times this S bar, which we were talking about earlier. So S bar we do not touch at all, okay? Because that's the resolved uh, velocities. At least the resolved velocity gradient. We can deal with this uh, L characteristic instead. Yeah, and we, we, we kind of can take inspiration from Van Driest. from Van Driest. Okay, so we, we have uh, something like this. So we have L characteristic there. So we have L characteristic there. But instead of, uh, instead of uh, just having this like vanilla, okay, uh, meaning to say you have this grid size, which is constant, you have this Smagorinsky coefficient, which is constant, you can add sort of a wall function here. This is one of the most basic ways to do the wall function modeling. So they do a Vendry's approach of Y plus against A plus. Very similar to what we have before. And again, value of A plus will be about 26. Okay, so that's that's uh, basically what we do for the uh, L characteristic. Okay, so okay, I think there should be a negative sign here. Yeah, that makes it right. Okay, so this is our Van Driest model. Okay, so uh, there are a number of ways that this can be uh, implemented, but let me let me first. Um, just roughly explain what's going on. Okay, so y plus is the distance away from the wall. Okay. Y plus is some distance away from the wall. Okay. So when uh, at the wall, y plus will be 0. So exponential of 0 is 1. Okay. So at the wall, y plus equals to 0. And... Uh, exponential of 0 equals to 1 so L characteristic equals 0 at the wall so that's how that's how this uh, Vendry's model they have this damping function which uh, it's very similar to the law of the wall model we have earlier and we have this uh, a plus making a reappearance as well because there are more, there's more than one way to do this. Okay, there's more than one way to do this. We can actually uh, have okay. We can actually have L characteristic also equals to some law of the wall function, some uh, mixing length model inspired function equals to. All right, so this is uh, very common. I mean, it is uh, done in open form at least. Okay, so you have sort of this kind of a formation, sort of this equation. But let me just uh, write it down. So L characteristic can also be equals to, uh, instead of this uh, delta, or C Smagorinsky delta into this, the Vendry's model can also look like this. Okay, kappa y, y, uh, into this function okay
So you can use this this uh, sort of a function near the wall. Okay. All right. So this 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 should be uh, the wall function. Okay. So we have two regions. Let's say this is the wall. In the near wall region, we kind of want to use this formula, kappa y into this uh, exponential formula. So kappa y, just like uh, what the boundaries did. Okay, so kappa again is approximately 0 0.4. Okay, so over here we use this model, kappa y into exponential or 1 minus exponential. Okay, minus y, okay, minus y plus over a plus, right? Near the wall, we want to use this formula, all right? The near wall region. But over here, we will want to default back to our Smagorinsky length. So the Smagorinsky length can be um, described as this near the wall. Further away from the wall, we want to use our classic Smagorinsky characteristic length, which is uh, Cs, C Smagorinsky times delta. And how do we do that? Uh, very simple. Okay, according to what they use in open form, they just use a minimum minimum of these two functions. All right. Uh, so we have, let's say, L characteristic, right? L characteristic equals to minimum of two two things. One is this uh, Cismagorinsky times delta. Okay, and then you have this kappa y. Okay, so that's what you're doing. All right, so near the wall. Um, this will be used, but anytime, uh, the thing is that as you get further and further away from the wall, y will increase, and therefore this, this function, damping function, kind of drops off. As y increases, what I'm highlighting here, this term gets closer to 1, and then this term actually just increases linearly with y. So the characteristic length away from the wall becomes bigger and bigger. But we don't want it to increase indefinitely, so we can just take the minimum of this. That means uh, any time that this function exceeds, it's bigger than the this uh, characteristic length uh, specified by our Smagorinsky coefficient, and of course the delta, it will default to that. So uh, let's draw a graph. So to make it clear. Okay. So we have we have this coefficient at uh, this first curve, which can represent uh, the mixing length model, the Vendries model. Okay, this can represent the Vendries model. So remember, it's an increasing function with y. So this is the L characteristic. Okay, and then we have the second second line. Second line actually denote the uh, this is the near wall. This is the Smagorinsky one, which is this uh, characteristic length scale. So we want to take the minimum of, uh, of this to be our characteristic length scale. So near the wall, this portion will apply because this is the minimum. All right, this is the uh, near wall curve uh, described by Van Driest. Okay, so it's a near wall curve. Okay, Van Driest. And then this is our classic Smagorinsky in the bulk fluid. Smagorinsky model. Okay. I will just leave it as that. Hopefully you get it. So um, this is how it's being done uh, in some CFD codes. For example, OpenFoam. Okay, so uh, of course in OpenFoam, the, the way we do it is slightly different. Okay.
In open form, we do it slightly differently. Okay, so uh, what what we have here is instead uh, we define delta uh, to be this minimum of whatever is here. Okay, so what we are saying, what open uh, what open form does for LES. So this is one example of a CFD code that does this uh, this sort of modeling. So we have the length characteristic length being this. Okay. So in open form, we will say that the characteristic length is the Smagorinsky coefficient times the uh, delta. Okay. For example, this delta, the subgrid scale, subgrid length scale, it is being described by uh yeah the cube root volume as we were uh, talking about earlier okay so uh far away from the wall okay we want to have this delta this delta over here i'm highlighting this one to be equals to the cube root volume so v to the power one over three or uh, as open form will have it here the notation is delta g It's a ge geometric delta function. So it's based on the cube root volume. Okay? But close to the wall, we want L characteristic to be equal to this one, this expression here. All right? So how can we... How can we tell open form hey I, I want to I want to up, adopt this function near the wall so th remember we have a minimum here so what what uh, open form actually controls is this Delta rather than controlling the characteristic length scale so what what this Delta is will be as follows how we can define Delta so we solve for delta by equating both of these near the wall. So near the wall, we define delta as follows. Okay, so del C Smagorinsky times delta equals to this uh, equation here. So delta will be, we just uh, divide throughout by C Smagorinsky, the Smagorinsky coefficient. Okay, so delta equals to k k y kappa y in over c smagorinsky times this uh, van dries damping function. So that's what you see here. Delta equals to kappa y over the smagorinsky coefficient. So kappa y over the smagorinsky coefficient times the damping function, which is one minus exponential minus y plus over a plus, and that's how we do it. Okay, so. Uh, these these are just some examples of uh, warm uh, near wall modeling, which is being used for, for example, the Smagorinsky uh, coefficient or Smagorinsky, uh, yeah, Smagorinsky um, LES model, or which and I mean it, it doesn't have to be just used for Smagorinsky model, but this one's the this this is one of the ways we can use wall functions for our Smagorinsky model. So we don't have to put so many, uh, we don't have to put so many grid, or we don't have to make our mesh size so small near the boundary layer. Okay, so that we can resolve our tabular motion and we don't have uh, a non-zero, okay? Uh, we don't have a non-zero turbulence at the wall. Okay, so, so again, just reiterate, if we have a constant Smagorinsky coefficient and a constant uh, uh, delta, we will definitely have this new t. Okay, we will probably have this new t turbulent viscosity being non-zero at the wall, which is not correct because this should be a viscous sublayer near the wall, so there should be no turbulence. So the way to to kind of get around this, uh, instead of just, I mean, one of the ways you can solve it is to uh, make your mesh really fine at the wall or in other words increase the grid nodes but that's problematic because it the computational power in needed increases exponentially with Reynolds number 
The other way is to do modeling, which is to artificially uh, suppress the characteristic length scale down using a Vendry's uh, damping function. So this is the Vendry's damping function I'm putting here. And you can either use this Vendry's function like so, where uh, near the wall we have um, we have this uh, uh, 1 minus exponential this uh, 1 minus exponential minus y plus over a plus near the wall and then far, far away from the wall it will just this whole characteristic characteristic length will just reduce to the Smagorinsky coefficient into delta that will be the characteristic length and the other way to do it is to apply this uh, this uh, length scale kappa y into 1 minus exponential minus y plus over a plus and that will be even better near the wall because having this kind of characteristic length scale near the wall I mean that's really consistent with our law of the wall described earlier so with kappa equals 0 0.4 so the way to uh, put this into uh, the Alice modeling is just to take the minimum of both of these okay so that uh, near the wall this function will be used away from the wall this function will be used okay so and I also mentioned how we did it in open how open form does it so open form uh, adopts this characteristic but it fixes it fixes the Smagorinsky coefficient but it changes delta so that this effect is done uh, so how would delta then be defined in near the wall so delta will be defined near the wall as such we equate both of these and then we just swap this over then we have the relevant delta that will make L characteristic near the wall take a form of this okay so that, that was a bit of a mouthful but uh, yeah this is basically how near wall modeling is done for uh, the smart gorinsky model uh, and with one example in open form right? It may differ from code to code, of course. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, and some comments as well. Thank you.